All right. Well, welcome everybody to successful options trade of the month for, oh gosh, what month is it? It is June, but actually he was the, the winner for May 2016. It's uh, John Wilson, our own John Wilson. And uh, let's just quickly, and we are live in Hawaii, by the way, as well. But let's just quickly do our disclaimer conditions here. Walking Your Success is not a uh, broker dealer or a financial advisor. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. This presentation is for educational purposes only. And uh, I don't know if we're doing any trade examples, are we? <laughs> well, yeah, one, example, one example. Is it hypothetical it's or is it real? It's okay if it's yeah. real. No, it's okay. Hypothetical. All right, because we don't really trade anything. Are we just kidding? <laughs> <laughs> But this is a hypothetical computer simulated trade. Is it believed to be as accurately represented as possible? However, live results may vary. And also make sure you are aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Now we're going to go over to John's cool oh, yeah, presentation. Yeah, look at that. That's what it looks like here in Hawaii. Yes, we are live in Maui at the McKenna Beach and Golf Resort. That's right. And uh, we figured that this would be a lot of fun here. So. I'm actually going to let John Wilson tell his story because he is just. I'm excited. He's an excited guy. <laughs> Let's get this party started, guys. Let's do it. All right. Well, I got a lot of slides here, so I'll try to keep. Uh, yeah, keep it. So, who, actually, who are you? Oh, wow, that's a good question. No, I mean, well, I'm jet lagged. That's who I am. All right. Now, it's good to be here, guys, in Maui. Okay. But now they can see the screen, so oh, yeah, we are good. Tap down. All right. Just for the the folks that are watching, um, I'm here next to John. We're in the driver's seat. This is pretty cool in Maui. And the first screen is buy and hold is too risky. And a drunk, dark throwing monkey could pick stocks better than I do. Or I could. And I trade for a living. And I firmly <laughs> believe that. <laughs> I cannot yeah. pick anything. And uh, so let's go. Let's keep going. Let's do this. Yeah. There's my disclosure. Kind of the same. Oh, I wouldn't have done mine. Yeah. It's a little less right, wordy. Fine. I know. Yeah, I like yours better. Okay. And then uh, who am I? I? I try to put as much as I could on this, this screen. Uh, I'm not a big Leonardo fan, but uh, I'm from Dallas, but I live in a town called Canmore, which is next to Banff, and they filmed that movie, Revenant, uh, I guess last year out there, so that's, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah awesome. Out, kind of a strange movie, but uh, that was filmed out there, a little cold. And my uh, three waffles, I have my wife, Jenny, from Belgium, and two girls, they're actually down here, uh, yeah, Sarah and Emma, who are 8 oh, and 11, right, they're nice. here in Hawaii, actually on the beach now, we're inside. Isn't it nice being a trader, being able to be in it's, Hawaii during the week? It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Here we are in Hawaii talking about trading. It doesn't get any better than that. Talking about trading in Hawaii. There you go. And we actually have an audience today. We so we have a live a audience. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping they don't throw any banana peels at us. But <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be good. So, yeah. So that's me, and uh, yeah, I live up in Canada now. We've been there about eight years, but I mainly trade the M3 okay. and the Rock, and I'm adding to a little, little quiver of trades. And my background's oil and gas, and do the old MBA in finance. So let's go. Oh, this is for Raymond, who's not in the room. Oh, he doesn't look Raymond? like this. It's just because if you don't know Raymond, it's just he's he's a funny guy. We love Raymond. So we do love Raymond. I wanted, everybody loves Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond. See, that's what everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so that was for you, Raymond, even though you're not here. Um, just, yeah, I kind of broke this up into three sections. Okay. Um, one is kind of teaching. The first, like, I love, like, well, spreading the word, spreading the gospel about uh, trading options. I, yeah, you go around and teach at schools and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, see, every semester I, I'll teach. I, one of the derivatives classes as a guest speaker, I come in and try to tell them what they're learning is irrelevant. But uh, <laughs> I love doing that. That's fun. So I have a couple of slides. If you, and I, I, I think it's great if you could try to do that in your local university, guys, or at least do a meetup. So I do a local meetup in Calgary once a month. So there's some slides you can use to kind of spark that interest. I think it's, it's great. Uh, game show. We have a little game show section. All right. We like game shows. And then some little takeaways. Maybe I could, I don't know, give you a nugget or two if I can for the new traders especially. Um, this is kind of for the, if you're spreading the word about trading, these are some slides. It starts off like this. What's Wall Street? It's kind of the image we have, right? And I like to show, hey guys, you know, these guys are in this, the eye of the storm. And these guys might be on the periphery. This is kind of Main Street. You see all the, you know, the money managers, and these 
these are the, you know, the books in the bookstore, CNBC. Right, right. Just, the it, stuff everybody follows, it loses money. Exactly. Nice. So I'm like, no one knows anything, so don't, just keep the money in your pocket, don't listen to them. Right. So that's, that's kind of my message to these guys. And, and, but then how do you make money in this game? The world's biggest game, and do you need yeah. a number of screens? That's kind of cool. That is. If you can buy more screens, you probably make more money. Yeah, that's I think, I think it's important. That's kind of like if I find another trade, I can make more money too. Exactly. <laughs> Just keep changing over. I mean, that's, I'd love to have a house like that. That guy must be rich. That's, that's what I'm, 24 screens. I only have two. Uh, yeah, I feel like a homer. I, 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 yeah, definitely. Craziness. I started, I've only been doing this four years, but that's exactly what I felt like when I first started. Yeah, you used to do some crazy stuff trading, right? You got like a 25 trades on a day or something? Yeah, in 2013, <laughs> I started in August, excuse me, September 2012. 2013, I did 4,000 trades, and I was I had at least 100 different underlines on the toss screen. Wow. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Like when I, that's, when I learned to trade, I did that for like two months, but then I said, this is not good. <laughs> you were smart of me. You pulled. I, didn't read, I, I, I kept going for a year. So now I have one. Yeah, the rut, sometimes SPX, but yeah, it's, uh, there's different ways to play this game. I advise you not to go that first way. But yeah. I like this slide, and no matter how experienced a trader we are, mm -hmm. this is helpful. Just look at the words in blue. Yeah. Stay positive. Stay positive. Yeah, definitely have to do that. Yeah, and make plans, follow the process, and those th first uh, three bullet points are from you. That's probably why you like them. I do like those bullet points. Yeah, I think nice. they're, they're probably a genius for those. I, I I can't see anything wrong with them at all, other than the spelling. I don't really spell oh, did I, oh, did I spell it wrong? No, no. Oh, okay. I right. probably did. You yeah, probably I, fixed I did, it. Yeah, I did a little. You know, check. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the Canadian way with OU for color. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So here we go. Passion. This is from S and D here. Passion. They have a lot of verbiage. I like the word passion. That's a good word. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of folks. I guess they want to trade, but to really be successful, you've got to like doing it. It's not oh, Sherry. Yeah, not. Sherry, yeah, Sherry's not trading. We're, we're trying to get She's just going to do it for the money. That was a problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not working out. You need more screens. Sherry. need some passion. <laughs> Four. Sherry's eating lunch. She only has two screens. I mean, it is kind of a... Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I have three, so I, I you know... Maybe if we upgrade our screens, maybe we can do something a little exactly. bit. So this, I like this. Anybody out there? Yes, is, that's, this is very good advice. Try actually. to keep it simple. And no, no, I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. <laughs> I, I, I give you credit. Now the next one it says Von Dominate. I like this uh, in the flexibility of trading options. But we're, yeah. we'll skip over this. Just talking about how trading options versus normal stocks, just cost basis reduction leverage. Mm -hmm. It's more of a tasty trade bent. But I like to throw that in there. We'll skip over this and. Oh, this I like this one because most people think about buying stock. I don't know. Can you see my cursor when I move it? I believe they can. Okay. <laughs> see, this is good. Yeah. I'm not a rookie here. But uh, buying stock and then you can use options become more bullish or with the lower probability of success. And then you do the higher probability. I just show you different ways to play this game. Again. Okay. So what you're saying if you're very bullish, you can buy a stock. Um, or, I, or you buy an out of the money call if you're very bullish. Yes. Yeah, and if you're kind of not so sure, you can sell on another money put. Yeah, exactly. If you want to, instead of owning the stock. You know, if you're an indecisive person, it's, you just it's, sell on another money put. That's what you do. I mean, that's, do Sherry does. It's still trade. Yeah. Or you don't trade. Yeah, that works, too. It, it's it's <laughs> been fun making fun of Sherry. Usually, it's a higher profit potential for a lot of people. That's, it does work out in the end. Yeah. Your equity curve. Yeah, it doesn't fall. And then the, the opposite, speaking of uh, the other side of the equation. Yeah, same way on the other oh, side. Right. So I like to show shorting stock and then you can play it using options. So that's, those are my <coughs> slides. I think I'm done on the educational if you want to. That was very educational. Thank you. See, I feel better too. Yeah. Now it's game time, guys. We had to make this entertaining. So are you a rookie or veteran trader, John? I think Gosh. I, <laughs> I don't like to be a veteran anything. It's, it sounds old. <laughs> I'm getting gray hair too. All right. Well, yeah. I guess I'd have to be considered a veteran. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. Okay. So here we go. We got some questions. All right, all right, all right. First one. This is kind of like, uh, you know, not Jay Leno, David. What's his name? Uh, Letterman, coming in with number ten. When you hear the word VIX, does it sound familiar, or does it sound like some WrestleMania hand grip move? I know, VIX, wow, VIX. VIX. I used to watch a lot of this. Last I, I used to watch it too. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I had a friend who actually was a professional wrestler. It's like Lance Armstrong. I found it was yeah. fake, and I was really disappointed. Yeah. 
That's a, that's a, that's a, that was, you know, when you're a kid and you're watching yeah. wrestling and you're, and you're thinking everybody's winning and then you find out it's like, not, you know, Santa Claus. <laughs> it's, <fine. laughs> it's true. So, <laughs> here's the weird thing. Does that bring back those bad memories? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, next one. Do you find yourself in bed thinking about your T plus zero line at 2 a.m. on a weekday? Not a weekend, of course. A little personal here. <laughs> answer yes, you are a veteran. Is yes. your T plus zero line up or down? <laughs> It's always flat. <laughs> That's I like my T plus zero line up. I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, Vix is a sub, it's a trader's bar. I like this. Actually, we should open a bar called the Vix. A trader's bar? Is it really? Huh. huh. In Chicago, I bet. Yeah, it's yeah. In Chicago they might do that. I can see that. Yeah, those people are kind of strange. They are. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Moving on to the ne next question. If you could be guaranteed 10% annually, wow. but no more, no less, into infinitum, would you take that? I think I would. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I think, uh, I guess you could take it inside your own head. Well, I could take it if I could do something else. I mean, you know, I, yeah. I could do a guaranteed 10% That's not a good answer somebody. I was looking for. I'm looking more for the, your... Yeah, I mean, if that's all I could do, I mean, it's, that would be pretty sad. That's, that's, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Every year. I mean, it does sound quite nice. And I mean, I'd still nice. be... You know, I'd still be working on cars if I call me 10% a year. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. so that's a lot of folks say, oh, that's great, 10%. percent i take in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, are you outsourcing your back testing? So That I, is insane. Yeah, and I know some traders who are successful, but they, they like to outsource their ideas, and they say they freeze up their time. Uh, that's I assume true. they're taking it in. It doesn't yeah, free yeah. up their money usually. It doesn't up their time. Time. Hopefully, T plus zero line is savvy. Yeah, so, <laughs> so definitely. So we'll go to number six. Have you found yourself discussing trading derivatives at a CFA event and felt like that bumblebee in the 1990s video by Blind Lim and No Rain? This is okay. You well, know, a little what? personal there on my, my I, side. I, I have absolutely no idea with this question. I don't, I don't think I don't know what CFA is. is. I don't. I, I know what a bumblebee is. Okay. That's about all I well, know. You feel out of place. <laughs> this is an old video. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bumblebee all right. Funny. Sorry, I had a little moment there when I wrote this question. Uh, this happened last year, and these guys actually were trading derivatives in Calgary. And really? Big, about 2,000 people at this event. And, oh, they, cool. I, I felt like I was, didn't understand what I was talking about. I mean, most people don't. Know. Yeah, it's, it's, just so, it's so different than regular trading. Right. Yeah, and you talk to a guy who does stocks, and they, they don't really have any clue no, what they're doing. No, no. Yeah. This is a CFA event. You know, it's a chartered financial analyst. You think, and they study, basic, you know, have a basis of it. So keep going. Moving on. When watching uh, JL's Monday webinars, do your eyes glaze <laughs> over when he starts talking about the trades? Is it happening now? That's what happens to Sherry. She tells me every week. She <laughs> That's says, what happens to my wife, and I guess about how my day was. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't really want to know. <laughs> she can't stand finance. Put her to sleep. So uh, do you have a plan? More, important, more importantly, do you follow your plan? I guess that could probably be for both. That's, that's yeah. something we always No, do. sometimes beginner plans have too much beginner plans, and they... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're not very good. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, number three, uh, when at Starbucks and a guy studying for his level two CFA exam, I see a CFA stuff here, uh, and ask a group of John Locke traders what they do, do they say trade or do they put their shoulders back and say, we are professional options traders with their heads held high? That was for Stephen, who's not here in the room. Stephen, oh, wow. He's here in Maui, though. He's here in Maui. That's yeah. right. He's here. Cats. He Most here. people, usually when I'm asked, I'm afraid to tell them what I do. What do you say just, when they ask you? I just say like I train traders or something. You say, yeah. Yeah, because it's it's like if you tell them they trade stocks, they go into this conversation about trading directional stocks, and and if you trade options, they say, oh, and they walk away. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you've experienced that yourself. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's, it's 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 a risk manager. That's actually a good idea. Risk manager. I'm a risk manager. I like to be a risk taker. <laughs> yeah. But you have to manage your risk when you're a risk taker, especially when you're a risk taker, because you have to manage your risk right to that point of death. If you cross that line, it's really bad. It's <laughs> actually, one of my friends is a trader counter, he base jumps. So you, you, you go right before you get hurt. Yeah, you're, it, it, right before. You're going to find the find that very thin line. If you fit, land right on it. scaring away the rookies. You don't want to do that anymore. Right? Okay. All right. You're right, all right, though. You're right. Yeah, you got to find the edge. Okay, guys, and two more to go. Do you want to tell everybody or everyone about what you do, but you can't because you'll get that look of 
that the dog gives you when you say, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of goes along with number number three. Right. And number one is uh, when talking to your spouse about taking a, a vacation, do you immediately calculate the mark when the market yeah. opens and closes? Yeah, we probably do. Never done that. You never done that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's right. Oh All right. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So new traders. Huh? Did, yeah. Tried, some advice for new traders. Just some advice. And listen, you. because John has some very good advice. Oh, this is profound. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You're a new trader. I'm I'm walking up to you, and you see an info commercial at 2 a.m. How does this sound? You can check your trade once a day. You don't have to worry about the news. Low draw drawdowns. Max risk is defined, and you can make, I guess, roughly 30% a year, and that's conservative, if you know what you're doing, and the trade can be quite boring. Well, it sounds pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So that's not, that's not too bad. So, yeah, but there's no free lunch, like I said in that last slide. So, yeah, if you're watching this webinar, you're kind of in the right place. So you must have been talking to David Thomas, back testing, back testing, back testing. Yeah, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Yeah, this is definitely Dave Thomas <laughs> all over it. David. Yeah. Oh, am I? Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but those three words are important. Yep. This, uh, but, yeah, of course, there's a lot of work. I know. Um, it is a lot of work. And, you know, you can hire it out, like you said, and that would probably not be a smart thing to do. But that, you know, it's funny. I remember in 2012, the fall of 2012, I, I heard about you at the Invest Tools conference. You heard about me at Invest Tools? I did. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Close at Invest Tools, the guy next to me. I worked for them once. Did you? Yeah, short time. Just okay. promoting with them. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah, that's how I heard about you. I, was, I looked you up and I was like, why doesn't he do an auto trade? Because when I first started trading, I was auto trading 10% oh, yeah. of my account. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> Great advice. Huh? Great advice. But I was like, why doesn't John have you auto trading? So, yeah. yeah. So I, obviously, we know now that's not the way to go. It, the word right here is work. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the, uh, oh yeah, the, what I'm saying is back testing has helped me. What I do is I like to compare it to how, not what John's done, but how mm -hmm. he's trading those weekly webinars. That's helped me out a lot, especially when I'm trying to morph from M3 to a lock. I've been looking All at right. the lock trade a lot more. See how you, what was your logic behind these moves? Mm -hmm. um, that's helped me out a lot. That's and so, fantastic. And you look at the new locks and you try to break, it, just break that trade. I mean, I only... What are the, weak, the pros and cons? Right. And I think most people, when they're back testing, they don't back test properly. Right. First of all, they're looking for, you know, and in life we find what we're looking for, as they say. So they're looking for the perfect trade when they back test it, and they find it. Yeah. Only it's not really the perfect trade because they didn't back trade it <laughs> properly. So it's true, and that's what <laughs> you can create that. So you need to be very careful back yeah, trading. You got to be careful. Yeah. You get false sense of security. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Very this false. is a perfect segue into. Good picture of you. Isn't it? Oh, that's that nice. My head's on backwards. Oh, yeah, so. you're, you're flexible. You're flexible. Yeah. <laughs> my artistic ability is not the best, but uh, this is my evolution. <laughs> Buy and hold until you're old. Yes, that's, that's how I started. Wow. I thought I was very Benjamin Graham focused. Well, you must not have done it too long because you're not yeah. that old. Yeah. That's right. yeah. I'm not that old. <laughs> and then I, okay, I was like, all right, so four years ago, start off, you know, doing. Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett. Okay, then okay, I got to watch CNBC. Get all these newsletters to try to find the right idea. I went through that. Remember that? I do oh. remember that. Yeah. It's like puberty and trading. So we got a next one is option education. See, so, I mean these guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Give yeah. It, they do a good job. It's, it's like learning a language, guys. They'll help you with the present tense. Mm -hmm. This is good. So when you when you go to the subjunctive, you move over here. And uh, I, Tasty Trade is great. I, I learned a lot of the market measures. Kind of opened my eyes. Yeah, they got a lot of information there. And, yeah, and then it moved over to here because it was, you know, the physique. And uh, yes, wow, <laughs> so, that that guy's good looking. Yeah, the guy said he had to be over here. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. But why? What well, what was the catalyst to moving on this side of the equation? It goes down to the strategies, and it's I have it right here. It says all about risk to reward. Mm. So these are kind of my core at the time. So it went from under pond doors. Matter of fact, I remember my first seminar, guys. A trade where it can go up, stay the same, and go down just a little bit. I was just like, or go down a lot. Depends how you had it. Right. I was like, seriously, I felt like it was like a gospel choir, like it just the clouds. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the the angels singing in the background, <laughs> and the birds, and the Unicorns butterflies running around. This was, I, this was, I, this was it. You see that unicorn that craft ice cream on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> After seeing these trades, I felt like I. I was the one doing you should it. see yeah. that. That's a really cool. That's a really cool video. 
States. It's good. See, you learn a lot here. This is all about expanding. Yeah, go on YouTube. Yeah, you know, yeah. Some kind of ice cream. My kids okay. show it to me. You know, they're doing quality things while they're alone. <laughs> of course. But look from iron condors to strangles to straddles. Look at that name, the spike lizard. That's pretty cool. That is a, that is cool. That's where you buy a, you do a straddle. With it's a like call. you see on Harry Potter or something. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like those are kind of crap. But yeah, yeah, you got uh, and then the butterflies, obviously. But that's <laughs> I wrote in blue. I'd rather trade a spike lizard. I mean, that sounds so much more cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a straddle with a call on the upside, so your upside risk is zero with a put ratio spread. So, and it basically gives you more bandwidth to be wrong. Okay. A normal straddle, but it's. Cool. At the end of the day, <clears throat> it's drawdowns, guys. That's why I moved over to the M three. So. No, these are great trades, straddles and strangles, and uh, but no, the butterfly, which is interesting. Yeah, great trade if you want to make three hundred trades a day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> it's interesting. A straddle is similar to butterfly, right? Without. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's a butterfly trade. without the yeah. risk. Uh, exactly. Without the risk coverage. Yeah. Exactly. So that that was those were my core, but now I moved over to this side just because of drawdowns. You've okay. come over from the dark side, oh, and, you've, was, and, you've, and you've come to the light. Oh, Luke is here. I mean, it's uh, and there's even more. <laughs> All it's right. A, I'm still in the uh, new traders section. It's kind of easier. For oh, uh, something from David Thomas, uh, one of our mentors yes, there. Very nice. Some fine words of wisdom for the lock community. And this is what Dave said. It's uh, the more conservative, conservative I've become, the more profitable I've become. Very and nice. I think it's, uh, yeah, it hits home. It hits home. You don't have to go for the home run. Keep hitting that single and just keep doing it consistently with your rules. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised. It's, it's less sexy, but that's okay. I think it, I like that. Profitable profitability to me. Yeah, sex is good for a while, but after a while, you know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, it just becomes a regular game. <laughs> <laughs> spice it up. Dave, you spice it up. Thank you. <laughs> and the next one is, uh, this is from you and Ryan. Basically, oh. I can't remember who coined it, but basically, find a trade that fits your personality. That might right. be Ryan. Yeah, Ryan's very, got a lot of insight. He's got some, some good quotes. So, yep. Ryan, if you're listening, thank you for that, and focus on the process. I also like the fact that Ryan takes a black tape and covers up his P and L. So yeah, it helps take the emotion out of high gamma trades. trading. Yeah, yeah, especially on those. Yeah. Yeah, so my, my gamma pants aren't that big. But uh, now, this is probably one of the best webinars. Anybody who's watching this, check out February 29th, 2016. If you ever want to see John have a little moment where he actually. Oh, no. Awesome. That was that time. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was that one moment. She, <laughs> Sherry came up, ran out to me, and said, What are you doing? It was great. I had to put that in there. <laughs> But you hit it on the head. It was beautiful. Do not modify the trading plan during the trade. That's bad trading. Just follow the plan. It was, yeah, right. it was great. It's like wake up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was, it was poetic. I'm glad you said I put that. a bearish butterfly on that. What do I do? It's right. like it's, it, yeah. it's, it, you already decided, didn't you? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's – and if you're new to a new trade, just keep it really small. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. – I, I like that day. So watch that segment. Cool. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, Cynthia, she's not she's not here, but yeah, she has a I'm a loser. Basically, says to be successful, you have to be a loser, guys. You're gonna have losing trades. Yeah. So, yeah. And trading is boring. A buddy in, in Calgary, that's he prompted me to write that article. It's true. Once you get in a nice. If you're trading for excitement, you're probably not gonna do very. That's well. right. There's other ways to have excitement besides trading. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> don't let the uh, trading be that key. Now, tips. This is my last one. Oh, uh, execution. I found this interesting um, for new traders, and I had the same problem. I remember emailing you. I didn't know you're actually when you make a, a rolling trade that you're supposed to keep the existing trades, like keep that in your uh, analyze tab. You know how you? Oh uh, yeah, right. I right. Saw on pick or swim. Yeah, I thought okay. I saw my PNL just tank, and it freaked me out because I didn't know how to execute these trades at the time. I remember like in late 2012. Oh, right, I, it right. Wasn't in the, it wasn't in the... It's like, what do I do? I don't know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I had no idea. So you really actually haven't been trading that long. No, I started September 2012. That's my first that's options trade. Fantastic. So, no, thanks. I was, so I freaked out. So I just wanted to share, if you're a new trader, work on your execution. So keep things small. Yeah, you should do all this stuff in paper right. exactly the same way you would do it live. Yeah. And then you'll notice that, you know, when you make the execution, the profit and loss drops on the analyzed graph, even though it didn't really drop. And then you can say, well, geez, instead of trying to freaking out and then doing something stupid. Exactly. Yeah, I, I was in the other <laughs> right. camp. But you can use the Analyze tab, create some workspaces and stuff like that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, practice trade execution during your backtesting sessions. That's, that's what John talks about. Yes. Yeah, that's very uh, how you're going to do stuff. Yeah, but we did an option view. It's quite nice. It's quick and easy. But in re reality, 
Uh, when it's right. Well, you can take off a butterfly and put one on at the same time. Right. Actually, you, right. you can't do that. You, you go take live. a butterfly and your positive <coughs> delta just shoots right. out of the roof. So figure out a way to do it without doing that. Right. N that's and yes, market makers take orders other than calls. So you know, people <laughs> ask me, they won't take a broken wing butterfly order. Uh, okay. How many legs can you do? I, I know. Well, you can certainly do condors. Yeah. You can yeah. certainly do four options at a time. So. That's, that's, that's another. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is another tip. Uh, when volatility is high, let's just say you're normally, I, I, I had to use an odd number, like 20 lot with two calls. I like to go 20 lot with one call instead of beefing up my butterflies. That's what I do personally because it's more conservative. I don't know what you think that about is, that. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, okay. it's, 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 more, it's more conservative. The thing is you may end up taking, the, th the reality is when you have to go 20 butterflies to one call, you usually make more money anyway. Right, right, right. So you yeah, probably right. be close, but you can, okay. you, if you have it, an easy trade, and you go with the 20 lots, then you might get up really early in the trade right. to be able to just scrap it, it and yeah. to take your money and run. That's right. So Okay. <clears throat> I know you put on more lots with a higher ball. The other thing you can do is you can do wider butterflies. You can do wider butterflies. That's right. what kind of what Ryan That gives talking. you a wider break even. Yeah. And that allows you to do Have less you done adjustments. That on M3? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do that on the M3 and the X. Okay. Uh, a lot because but even with the uh, rut, you would, you would stay with a fifty point wide. You uh, well, you can you can widen them. I've done it before. I just I've stay I stay with the fifty because okay. I like yeah. to stay with the fifty. But, yeah, yeah. but reality is, you know, you're going to be more volatility sensitive going wider. But right. then again, you're also more volatility sensitive with more contracts. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of a wash. It's, right. There's you know. Pro and con. <laughs> and then low fall, I like to expand this a little bit longer, maybe a week further yeah. out, and I like to take it off a little earlier. That's kind of the gist. Of yeah, longer term M threes, and also run a little positive delta low volatility. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, it really helps. Yeah. yeah. And now for experienced traders, I'm not sure if I can help you out, but I'll give my best. So we've got a lot of great traders in the room. This this trade has a lot of stuff. I can summarize it really quickly. The top part is when rut. This is the Russell. Is above mm -hmm. the 200 day moving average, and the other ones when it's below. So you trade it differently? Yeah, I tried it. This is this is a 2016, <coughs> mm -hmm. and back testing 10 years of the rock, and basically I'm, I this is kind of my norm is M3s, just two okay. of them on. Yep. So let's say you know two M3s on when it you know interrupt 56 days, the typical M3, nothing, and it, it can be 58 days, it can be 52. You, everybody mm -hmm. understands. Right. The whole purpose of this trade, of this chart, of this sorry, of this the slide. Is to show you that I'm moving into a rock mode. So, oh, yeah. So I had M3, M3, the same. But I'm trying to take my other M3 as just the 30 days and morph it into a rock. If it's a 20 lot, I'll go to a 10 lot rock. If I'm doing a 100 lot M3, I won't go to a 50 lot rock. I might do a 20 to max. Well, people ask me about this, right? And you always have to trade your risk. Yeah. Right. So if you're doing a M3 and you want to convert it to a bearish butterfly. Right. You need to cut your size in a third because, it's because it's, it's a, yeah, because you're taking on three times the risk. You don't want to be trading M3s and then you know, losing 30%. Right. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, you don't want to be doing that. So. That's, yeah. and, and I call these my core trades. The other one I call yeah. sprinkle trades, you know, the opportunistic, you know, the bull and the bear. Yeah. So I, I, but that's kind of the idea is have a core, stick with it, really own it. And uh, my M3, I feel so confident, but I'm trying to improve it with the rock. So we're going to talk a little about yeah, that. Yeah, because it has certain deficiencies like anything else. It does. No matter how, what your trade, it has deficiencies. So it does. <clears throat> one of the challenges with the M3 is in grinding up markets. Right. Right. So um, you can overcome that by doing a rock, you know, either gradually converting it or completely. Right. So and that's, yeah. and that's what I'm working on in here, here sizing. So I'm yep. And uh, so why, how, how did this come about in 2016? Because we were in New Hampshire. I uh, was doing only M3. So there was... Like it's got a cool name, and uh, but more importantly, it's performance. Everybody who's listening to this webinar and who's here in the room, you know about the Rock. It's, it's an awesome trade. And it's done fantastic over the last oh, five years. It's not another part, guys. Yeah. And it's, <coughs> it's, it's, it's a little challenging right now. It is a little challenging because right now. Because with close, uh, all closed expiration trades, have pretty been kind of yeah. challenging lately. But, yeah. But uh, you know, it'll be right, it'll be back soon as market levels. Yeah, up. it will. And it's and then that's why I say you might want to add it into your quiver. But it's yeah. uh, it's. Has a lot more nuances, um, but yeah, this basically it's a 30-day trade, nor and you don't have to overlap. And it's a very high theta, mm -hmm. but I found it interesting. Like I call it the pucker up factor. The last bullet point, yeah, it's a little bit more. It's less than the, <laughs> it's less than the bearish butterfly, but more than the M3. Right, right. But uh, if you can if you can handle that, you get a nice little cerveza at the end. It does reward you. 
well, yeah, you get paid for trading gamma. I mean, you, this, you, you get, get paid for trading gamma. gamma. I, mean, you, I, I can say you open a trade that never loses, but you never would have win either. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you might if you get hit a lottery ticket. Like, if, right. if your thing is, you know. <laughs> it's funny because I, I have a hard time trading a ten. If I do a hundred lot in three, just putting on a ten lot uh, bearish butterfly for me. Yeah. Even though the, the risk is less, I yeah. have a hard time with that. Just because my personality. I know it's. I know Ryan is the opposite. Uh, I feel like I'm the bus. I'm in the bus, but I'm not driving the bus. I'm in the back of the bus. Right, because it's a rule-based trade, completely it's rule-based. Rule -based, where M3 drive. gives you some flexibility. Exactly. <laughs> so I feel like I'm driving it. Um, right. And I, I, I actually lean more negative delta on the M3 when I'm in, in this rock mode. Try right. Yep. So I can say, hey, market, go up, please. So I can go into a rock. So okay, I, cool. that's why I kind of tweak it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, go to the next one. I'm not trying to curve fit here, the, the performance of the rock. There's a lot of stuff here. I think it's the, the top one. If you look at 2013, look how many days it was in the above the 200-day moving average versus mm -hmm. below. Right. 12, sorry, how many months? 12 months versus zero. Yeah. 10 months versus two in the next year. You, you follow the – in the last eight months, we've been below. So uh, the performance hasn't done as stellar. You know what? I'm, I'm trying – Stay away from any filters that are, are trying to keep it very broad, like a big old ship that's hard to turn. Um, it, it's probably a good idea. I don't, no, my answer is no. I'm, I even feel bad about using a 200-day moving average. I try to stay away from all of this charting stuff, keep it very simple. But I, right. I just found it interesting that this trade performs so well. And it's also ATR, right? When you're above the 200-day moving average, ATR yeah. is low. ATR is low. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what so that's this trade is. Typically, yeah, right. Because, well, any high gamma trade. Right. right. So, right. so yeah, yeah. 70, I mean, the, how many months? And I, I just took, uh, I went from 07 to 2016, how many months yeah. to April? It was above and below. Just to show you, I didn't back I didn't show the back testing results, but these are from John Locke's website. Okay. It's just kind of a way to say, hey, guys, when we're above the 200-day moving averages, it looks historically that the – It does right. very well, yeah. Yeah. So – and that's what sparked my interest. So, a little more cowbell. Cowbell. All right. All right. We love cowbell. Yeah, a little Will Ferrell. <laughs> that looked like your stomach today, didn't it? Yeah, right there. <laughs> so, okay, sure. yeah, John Locke was uh, – <laughs> we'll leave it at that. It was good. It was good. So, yeah, there's some little, uh, little tricks here. Uh, we have an example from the M3. Um, yeah. yeah, we're all using weeklies, it seems like. Do you say a lot of folks are using weeklies for smart things? Some that... don't, some don't. You know, there's pluses and minuses. So right. They have more work, you know. It's so, more work, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people are using weeklies, so. Yeah. yeah. You can reduce capital that way, among other ways. Right, but, yeah. right. So, I, yeah, I'm not, I don't have an example of that. I'm going to show you. I call this, this is, I mean, obviously these ideas come from the program, but the Texas Two-Step, I had to give it a better name. And uh, it's for helping you on the downside, just buying time instead of rolling the tent back. And ah, yes, in the rock, you see, so which I do recommend most of the time, by the way, to roll back. You know, so no, not the roll back, but but not necessarily to roll back. But the thing is, when we have an M3 program, uh, when we're trying to put a program together for everybody, we roll back because it's the most controllable position, to say. Because if you just put a put on, if you just put puts on, for example, then you have to start really monitoring your Vega. You have to start monitoring your theta because your T plus zero line will collapse when volatility stops. Yep. And yep. the market just has to stop and it's like, bam! Yep. Right? So, so in order to avoid that and make it a more simplistic program, we roll it back. But realistically, as long as you're inside the tent, you could just yeah, do something like what you're doing. Yeah, so, and yeah. this is what you talk about too. Just, uh, when I back to, I mean, I, I do it black and white, this method. This is hypothetical. I, just, I was trying to think of an example. And this is June 8th, so a couple weeks ago. And basically, this it's trading at 11.89. I didn't get the black dot. It should be right here. It's getting close. Um, we're, we're fine. Everything's great. Delta is positive five. Okay. So obviously the price is going to fall. We're at, it was 11.89. We fell to 11.81. Here's the dot. It's we're at positive 53 delta. Um, See 1170. We're still above the shorts. You can tell. We, you can see we did a vertical. Right. But we had a positive 53, so we're above. And some folks might get a little. Okay, we got a little gamma problem here. I mean, just, right. Just, yeah. just, they might slope. They might yeah. feel uncomfortable. So what I like to do. So when we reach the delta limits, or you reach that uncomfortable uncom factor, is basically I roll half of my upper puts down, and 
one strike, and then I roll the other hat, the shorts, I roll that down two strikes. Called the Texas two step, like roll one, two. A little, a, little, a little broken wind condor. Right, broken wind good. condor. And then yeah. if I have to do, I'll do a 10 line instead of a five, right? Yeah, whatever it takes to level whatever it out. Takes. Yeah. And I can get it halfway, so we'll go from 53 to 18. Usually I do you know, 26 or 25. Just try to keep it, just cut it in half. I'm buying time. That, it's something I use all the time. Problem is, we'll, we'll see in the trade, but um, I don't know if that's something you like to do, but I like to be very systematic. Yeah, no, I do like to do that. It's it, Rather than rolling the position back, that's one thing. Right, good. right. Yeah, yeah, very good. And... Uh, so then, yeah, that's what it looks like after. It's a little bit better. Because why, you know, why are you rolling down the upper side? That would be a good question that somebody would have. Right. You know, why don't you just do the vertical and correct your delta? Well, then you're you're, you're risking your upper side. Yeah. If you right. Shorts roll the shorts. Right. You're, you're risking your reversal. Reversal. Exactly. Right. So you so you bring the you yeah. bring in the upper long. In some high volatility, you can just do the shorts. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Or if you get way way behind the tent. <laughs> if you get way <laughs> and behind, you're, and you're yeah. still not concerned about the upside because it's going to take like 90 points to get there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you, yeah, <coughs> condorizing is not an issue. Yeah. So yeah, that, I, that's something I like to do. And then the next day it falls again. So now we're 11.64. You're below your shorts. So you go, okay. I'll do the same thing. I'll roll, you know, the other top one strike, the five lot down one, and then the other. <laughs> so I said, let's try it again. And then you try to see what it looks like. And then it gets to the point you become too condorized or you just, it's not, your risk is now to the upside like you're just. Yeah, right. So right. I just, I, that, was, that was kind of a little trade tip I, I liked. I like to do quite a bit. Well, 90% of the time you can do that because the market just kind of stalls at that point. Exactly. Or, or maybe, and then you get back and in the game. And then you get back in the game again. Right, you just reverse right. it out. So that was, that was, I tried to throw an example. And that was in three. And then, Rock, I don't, this is the last slide, I think. And I just like to say with a Rock, I like to double up. If I'm going to do a 10 lot rock in 30 days, I like to start off if I'm in N3 mode with a 20 lot. So, yes, that's, that's how I like Yeah, because you're doubling your max loss number. Yeah. And that, and that makes sense. So, you know, that would be different from the. So, when you're doing a rock trade in general, it may not be a bad idea to say, you know what, if I'm. You can go on your risk. You say, well, if I'm willing to risk $20,000, I can go in double size with my M3. Switch it back over. Switch back into the rock trade. Right. Yeah. It's right. a smaller size. Yep. And sometimes yep. you'll get that that the profits that the rock would have had. You see that double size in three. But so I like to do that, and then yeah. the downside. What did I, oh, I, this is what you spoke about on one of your coaching sessions on a Wednesday, which is nice. Is basically leg into the adjustment. Don't just pull off the band aid. You remember that when you oh, yeah. leg into a cap <laughs> or an M3R. Right. Right. I thought that was kind of neat because the yeah. fade is, is very you, high. right. You don't necessarily. In the rock trade in general, we we convert stuff very, very quickly because it would take me hours to explain a gradual conversion probably, right? So we just say, okay, well, you're going to go from this to that. But the reality is that's a very drastic shift, and you most of the time you're going to want to do it a little bit more gradual. Then you can pick where you want to be. So you can you can go from, um, you know, you can, you can pick where you want your upper butterflies to be and just start buying them. Keep your T plus zero line flat. And then as you come into the upper butterfly, you roll everything up and drop the call. Drop the call. Right. <coughs> right. Or whatever you need to do. Well, yeah, but if you're already in the rock, it's in, you're already in the rock. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, you're already, and you're winning. You're oh, the, oh, you're, oh, you're, you're 40 oh, points back on your Oh, position. you're talking about going from a rock position into a, a M3, M3 position, yeah. Right, right. So like that's the other thing, like too. It. I like to go, yeah, because like I said, half the time the market stalls. Yeah. And if the market stalls, you get money back right away. Because the fade is so fine. much higher when you, oh, start, yeah. when you start peeling it off. I mean, you're going to get hurt if you, the market comes down hard at that point. Yeah. But that's just the way it goes. Yeah. You, know, you can you can make corrections for that. You can buy puts. Right. You can buy puts. <coughs> and protect and, against and that. Sheridan says that. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Well, okay. that's, that's not bad so, advice. So the, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. the last slide is the best one. Sorry, everybody watching. Yeah. It's our, it's our first day of the conference, and we're still inside. We should go to the beach now. Yeah, I think it is beach time. So <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Wait, are there more questions? Sure. Are we good? Yeah, well, good. yeah, we didn't talk about it too much, but if, um, um, why you were chosen a successful option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? Why is that? Now, I'm starting to wonder myself. Yeah, now. Exactly. I mean, after that presentation. Yeah, 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 no, that was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but, you know, John's been, uh, he's, I, I mean, look, at it. it's been 2012 to 2016, four years. Been through, uh, obviously worked like hell to get to where he is. He went 300 trades a month, and he finally came to the light and decided to do one or two trades a month, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and he's been doing really well. I mean, just the um, congratulations. Uh, oh, thanks. Yeah. This has been 
he has a lot of education. He educates other people, and he helps out uh, with you know stuff that we need. Thank you. Yeah, and, and the blog. My God, the blog. <laughs> I love it. It's fun. It is, yeah. Guys, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's awesome to read. No, thank you. We're having fun. The videos. We're having a good time. So yeah, so we just gotta we'll turn we'll turn we'll turn this a little bit. Oh, to yeah. the outside. I don't know. Can you see it? Can they see out there? That's they can't cool. see out there. Oh. Well, you'll have to we'll look on Facebook then. That's all we can tell you. We, we are really here though. So yeah. <laughs> you're gonna go it's back. Well, you'll be anywhere. Right. It's all fake. It's all we're really, in, really in, in, in Canada. <laughs> we go back on. Look at those mountains. Yeah, it's, it's really different. No, it's right. great. I've got a great community. So, Wait, when did you start the community? How long ago was it? This is that's Sherry's question because Sherry knows everything and I know nothing. So, I, I, I mean, it's just no, no. She doesn't tell me yet, but, but I just won't pay attention. <laughs> No, a great, yeah, yeah, we believe it's October. Recently, though, recently. All, all that, all that goes to Sherry. She put that together. She came in and just did an amazing, amazing job. So, um, that's why I tell yeah, you, I didn't yeah. say in my presentation, but it was last uh, New Hampshire, the last year. Last was last May. Yeah, that's yeah. when I hey, Pam, remember the evolution. That's right. I moved up. You were doing Tasty Trade back then. I was then, still right? Tasty Trade. I, right. I moved up. And you looked so tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I was. I was hurt. I was late. He didn't say anything. He's like lethargic. I'm like, who was that guy? <laughs> Look at me now. Look at him now. Like, I mean, you know. Oh, Chubbsy Puff here. Yeah, yeah. I should sit next to Dave Thomas. Here I am. I'm sitting next to Dave and Cindy. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, we've got to see the light, though. So. These people are smart. I'm like, I'm right. You know? If you didn't know me, why'd you come? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that was that was a turning point. Yeah, I cool. Believe you can trade more than a ten lot. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, so, super. Yeah, that was uh, that was it was fun. It's fun That's to be fantastic. here, guys. Fantastic. All right, great. Well, thank you. It was great talking with you, John. And uh, I guess there's no questions. Well, thank you. Yay! Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we, we're signing off from Maui. It's time to go to the beach. <laughs>